47 Eyewitness News in high definition. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 6, was it excessive force? Fresno Police Chief Jerry Dyer addresses concerns over video of an arrest that was shared on social media. Also, did you feel it? That was a big question after an earthquake hits the California desert, but it was felt here in the valley. And it's one of the biggest fireworks shows in the valley. We are live at Freedom Fest in Clovis. I'm tracking the return of the triples on this holiday weekend coming up. This is CBS 47 Eyewitness News at 6 in high definition. Happy 4th of July, everyone. I'm Eric Rosales in for Ken Malloy. And I'm Catherine Hur. Developing right now a video on social media is sparking controversy. It's claiming to show a Fresno police officer using excessive force, hitting a man repeatedly while he's on the ground. This happened last night at a sober living center on Bulldog Lane. CBS 47's Kirsten Mitchell joins us now live in the control room. And Kirsten, Chief Dyer says that the Facebook video doesn't tell the whole story. Eric Chief Jerry Dyer called an impromptu news conference today saying he knew this video had the potential to go viral. Now, this all started when officers got a call that a man was high on crystal meth and was threatening people with a knife. Put your hands behind your back. Body cam video shows the struggle between officers and 39 year old Roger Ismail. As Ismail refused to cooperate with their commands to put his hands behind his back. Get on the ground or you're going to get tased. Officers tased him several times, but it didn't completely work. Dyer saying he was very strong, likely due to the influence of drugs. At this point, Dyer says the officers thought he was reaching for a knife in his waistband. When officers couldn't get both hands into cuffs, a sergeant made the decision to use physical force with a series of blows to the ribs. The seven strikes to the rib cage by the officer and did not show all of the other resistance that led up to it and the restraint quite frankly, on the part of an officer. After officers arrested Ismail, he went to the hospital where he claimed he wasn't hurt. He made a comment, I believe, um, while he was at the hospital uh, about how those body strikes had no effect on him, said that the officer hit like a girl. And Dyer isn't denying that officers used force in that video, but says his officers will use it when needed. That entire video has been posted online so the public can see for themselves. We have that posted on our website, yourcentralvalley.com. Reporting live in the control room, Kirsten Mitchell, CBS 47 Eyewitness News. Thank you so much, Kirsten. And as you mentioned, you can see more of the video on our website at yourcentralvalley.com. We have continuing coverage tonight. Fresno County Sheriff's Deputy John Erickson doing much better today. And he's giving us a thumbs up from his hospital bed. He was shot in Toll House on Tuesday. In his message to the community, he says, quote, Happy Fourth of July. Thank you for all the prayers, support, and kindness. In news from around the state, Governor Gavin Newsom has declared a state of emergency in Kern County after a 6.4 earthquake struck the area. Now this is video from a home in Ridgecrest in Kern County where the quake was centered. It hit just after 10.30 this morning and there were some injuries and two house fires were reported in Ridgecrest. The quake was felt in Southern California and all the way to Nevada. We have more video to show you. This quake sent liquor bottles flying off of store shelves in Ridgecrest. An employee says that she was helping a customer when the quake hit. The fridges were actually opening up. Um, the, everything that was on the shelves came crashing down. The Ridgecrest Regional Hospital was evacuated. The U.S. Geological Survey reported more than 80 aftershocks. In news out of the South Valley, who would steal from a high school group selling fireworks just trying to raise money? That's what members of the Redwood High School's Band and Color Guard in Visalia want to know. Their Honda generator was stolen from their fireworks booth last night at Demery and Goshen. They say the booth was packed with people when all of a sudden the lights went out and a truck was seen taking off from the area. That generator cost $1,000. When word of the theft hit social media, there was an outpouring of support. And that booth sold all of its 
fireworks. Oh, that's a great that story. That is sold Good out. Good ending. Yes. Good ending there. Turning to weather, what will it be like tonight for firework shows around our area? Chief Meteorologist Marina Jurica joins us now with our pinpoint forecast. It's been warmer today, as I'm sure you felt. We hit the low to mid 90s across the valley floor and will continue to warm as we approach the weekend. Currently, right now, we're at 92 in Fresno, Hanford, Lemoore, 90 in Merced, 91 in Madera, 85 in Oakhurst, and 64 in Sequoia. And we are going to be looking at quite a toasty rest of the holiday weekend. Our average high for this type of year is 97. So tomorrow will be a touch above that at 98. Saturday will be the warmest day at 101. And then Sunday will We'll be sitting at 95 and that's a nice cool onshore flow that's actually going to give us a glorious next Monday and Tuesday. I've got details on that coming up but first here's a look at your allergy forecast brought to you by Dr. A. Maminian of the Allergy Institute. New at 6, 4th of July celebrations are underway all across the valley. In Clovis, thousands are arriving to La Monica Stadium for Freedom Fest, one of the largest firework shows in the valley. CBS 47's Kaylee Hunt is there live with all the fun. Kaylee. Doors opened at 5 p.m. and it's five dollars to park your car and five dollars to enter. Right now there is live music and people are already starting to scope out their spots to watch the fireworks later on tonight. It's the 4th of July and Freedom Fest is the perfect place to celebrate the holiday in sparkling fashion. It's, uh, it's going to be a great time. It always is. It's Organizer Bruce Wilson says there will be live music. Food trucks and a ton of fireworks. Overall, the cost to put on this event is between fifty-five to sixty thousand dollars. A firework show is about a thousand dollars a minute to shoot. So, as you can see, you know it's about we're about twenty-five to thirty-minute show, twenty-five thirty thousand dollars just for fireworks. There will be about 1,000 fireworks at the show tonight. Crews have been working hard, setting up the big show, getting ready to light up the night sky. What, what makes it worth it, and it's really here in the crowd at the end, you light that last shot off, it breaks in the sky, and everything goes dark, and you hear the crowd. Some people, like Mai Vang, choose to enjoy the fireworks from outside the stadium. Every year we come out here, so, you know, it's an exciting event for us. So we're always out here enjoying it. We're barbecuing, and then, you know, we come out here later at night. She says after a fun day with the family, this is the perfect way to end the day. But then we sit out here and we see it. So, you know, it's, it's beautiful. Again, doors are open, so come on out. And the fireworks show is expected to start a little after 9 o'clock, and I'm told it's supposed to be amazing. Reporting live in Clovis, I'm Kaylee Hutt, CBS 47 Eyewitness News. All right, thank you. And for a list of other 4th of July celebrations throughout the valley, just go to our website, yourcentralvalley.com. Well, as of midnight Thursday, direct satellite service provider Direct TV and AT&T UVerse unilaterally made the decision to drop network and local programming to 120 Nexstar-owned stations nationwide. Both Direct TV and UVerse are owned by AT&T. Nexstar is the parent company of KGPE. The action follows AT&T's refusal to accept an extension of the existing distribution agreement with Nexstar. To allow Nexstar time to reach an agreement with AT&T, Nexstar is eager to reach an agreement to get KGPE back on the air for impacted viewers and regrets AT&T's rejection of the extension, which led to the inconvenience to viewers wanting to watch their favorite news and entertainment programs. And coming up next here on Eyewitness News at Six, find out why a school district in San Francisco.